experience. It is simply any interplay between an active and questioning self and any other active and external reality. The mass of experience is determined by depth of concept plus totality of recognition of the reality of the external. The motion of experience equals the force of expectant imagination plus the keenness of the sensory discovery of the external qualities of contacted reality. The fact of experience is found in self-consciousness plus other existences, other thingness, other mindness, and other spiritness. Man very early becomes conscious that he is not alone in the world or the universe. There develops a natural spontaneous self-consciousness of other mindness in the environment of selfhood. Faith translates this natural experience into religion, the recognition of God as the reality, source, nature, and destiny of other mindness. But such a knowledge of God is ever and always a reality of personal experience. If God were not a personality, he could not become a living part of the real religious experience of a human personality. The element of error present in human religious experience is directly proportional to the content of materialism which contaminates the spiritual concept of the universal father. Man's pre-spirit progression in the universe consists in the experience of divesting himself of these erroneous ideas of the nature of God and of the reality of pure and true spirit. Deity is more than spirit, but the spiritual approach is the only one possible to ascending man. Prayer is indeed a part of religious experience, but it has been wrongly emphasized by modern religions, much to the neglect of the more essential communion of worship. The reflective powers of the mind are deepened and broadened by worship. Prayer may enrich the life, but worship illuminates destiny. Revealed religion is the unifying element of human existence. Revelation unifies history, coordinates geology, astronomy, physics, chemistry, biology, sociology, and psychology. Spiritual experience is the real soul of man's cosmos. 5. The Supremacy of Purposive Potential Although the establishment of the fact of belief is not equivalent to establishing the fact of that which is believed, nevertheless the evolutionary progression of simple life to the status of personality does demonstrate the fact of the existence of the potential of personality to start with. And in the time universes, potential is always supreme over the actual. In the evolving cosmos, the potential is what is to be, and what is to be is the unfolding of the purpose of mandates of deity. This same purpose of supremacy is shown in the evolution of mind ideation when primitive animal fear is transmuted into the constantly deepening reverence for God and into increasing awe of the universe. Primitive man had more religious fear than faith, and the supremacy of spirit potentials over mind actuals is demonstrated when this craven fear is translated into living faith in spiritual realities. You can psychologize evolutionary religion, but not the personal experience religion of spiritual origin. Human morality may recognize values, but only religion can conserve, exalt, and spiritualize such values. But notwithstanding such actions, religion is something more than emotionalized morality. Religion is to morality as love is to duty, as sonship is to servitude, as essence is to substance. Morality discloses an almighty controller, a deity to be served. Religion discloses an all-loving father, a god to be worshipped and loved. And again, this is because the spiritual potentiality of religion is dominant over the duty actuality of the morality of evolution. 6. The Certainty of Religious Faith the philosophic elimination of religious fear and the steady progress of science add greatly to the mortality of false gods, and even though these casualties of man-made deities may momentarily befog the spiritual vision, they eventually destroy that ignorance and superstition which so long obscured the living God of eternal love. The relation between the creature and the Creator is a living experience, a dynamic religious faith which is not subject to precise definition. 
To isolate part of life and call it religion is to disintegrate life and to distort religion. And this is just why the god of worship claims all allegiance, or none. The gods of primitive men may have been no more than shadows of themselves. The living god is the divine light whose interruptions constitute the creation shadows of all space. The religionist of philosophic attainment has faith in a personal god of personal salvation, something more than a reality, a value, a level of achievement, an exalted process, a transmutation, the ultimate of time-space, an idealization, the personalization of energy, the entity of gravity, a human projection, the idealization of self, nature's upthrust, the inclination to goodness, the forward impulse of evolution, or a sublime hypothesis. The religionist has faith in a god of love. Love is the essence of religion and the wellspring of superior civilization. Faith transforms the philosophic god of probability into the saving god of certainty in the personal religious experience. Skepticism may challenge the theories of theology, but confidence in the dependability of personal experience affirms the truth of that belief which has grown into faith. Convictions about God may be arrived at through wise reasoning, but the individual becomes God-knowing only by faith through personal experience. In much that pertains to life, probability must be reckoned with, but when contacting with cosmic reality, certainty may be experienced when such meanings and values are approached by living faith. The God-knowing soul dares to say, I know, even when this knowledge of God is questioned by the unbeliever who denies such certitude because it is not wholly supported by intellectual logic. To every such doubter, the believer only replies, How do you know that I do not know? Though reason can always question faith, faith can always supplement both reason and logic. Reason creates the probability which faith can transform into a moral certainty, even a spiritual experience. God is the first truth and the last fact. Therefore does all truth take origin in him, while all facts exist relative to him. God is absolute truth. As truth, one may know God, but to understand, to explain God, one must explore the fact of the universe of universes. The vast gulf between the experience of the truth of God and ignorance as to the fact of God can be bridged only by living faith. Reason alone cannot achieve harmony between infinite truth and universal fact. Belief may not be able to resist doubt and withstand fear, but faith is always triumphant over doubting, for faith is both positive and living. The positive always has the advantage over the negative, truth over error, experience over theory, spiritual realities over the isolated facts of time and space. The convincing evidence of this spiritual certainty consists in the social fruits of the spirit which such believers, faithers, yield as a result of this genuine spiritual experience. Said Jesus, If you love your fellows as I have loved you, then shall all men know that you are my disciples. To science God is a possibility, to psychology a desirability, to philosophy a probability, to religion a certainty an actuality of religious experience. Reason demands that a philosophy which cannot find the god of probability should be very respectful of that religious faith which can and does find the god of certitude. Neither should science discount religious experience on grounds of credulity, not so long as it persists in the assumption that man's intellectual and philosophic endowments emerged from increasingly lesser intelligences the further back they go finally taking origin in primitive life which was utterly devoid of all thinking and feeling. The facts of evolution must not be arrayed against the truth of the reality of the certainty of the spiritual experience of the religious living of the God-knowing mortal. Intelligent men should cease to reason like children and should attempt to use the consistent logic of adulthood, logic which tolerates the concept of truth alongside the observation of fact. Scientific materialism has gone bankrupt when it persists in the face of each recurring universe phenomenon in refunding its current objections by referring what is admittedly higher back into that which is admittedly lower, 
Consistency demands the recognition of the activities of a purposive creator.